Hello and welcome to the course summary for Teaching for Home Learning for Primary Science. Thank you very much for participating on the course. Um, throughout the course discussions, there were a few issues and comments that were raised that I thought was really worth touching upon today. And I'm delighted to be joined by Rachel Jackson, who's one of our primary science subject specialists. So the first question is on assessment uh, and it's about um, how we assess children's learning uh, to make it really meaningful and move their learning forward and particularly where we can do this with younger year groups through remote learning as well. So, Rachel, over to you. Thanks, Matt. So, yeah, this is a really big topic um, and it's been um, a topic of conversation in our primary community forum um, that I've been keeping an eye on over the last few weeks. Um, it's, it's a lot of teachers are finding it difficult to actually not just assess, but assess children's learning remotely. Um, especially as you're saying, um, the work often may not be done independently. So um, some ideas, um, you know, a lot of teachers are using similar techniques to the ones they'd use in the classroom. They're just delivering it differently. So things like um, concept cartoons for, for pre-assessments to find where your children are before you actually are then planning where to take them next are really useful things. And again, they can be done um, over remotely as an online <laughs> um, or you can actually send images home that children can then discuss with parents or discuss in a, in a remote learning class through Google Classrooms or Teams, whatever they're using, if they are using that. Um, so, you know, other things, Explorify websites, teachers find extremely useful for, again, identifying children's misconceptions or their, their preconceptions about what they're going to be learning. So, again, that's a really solid basis to then build their learning on. Odd, there's odd one outs on there, which are useful to use. Again, you could send home paper copies of this that children could work on. Um, again, getting children to draw things. So drawing what, what, the, what they think is happening is a useful thing to do, especially with children who perhaps aren't ready to write things out or don't have the, the full vocabulary. Um, concept maps, um, knowledge organizers are other things that have been discussed. And um, I would suggest having a look on there because you can actually post um, another question in there and there's lots of teachers that can actually support you with that. If you do have the luxury of Teams or Google Classroom or some sort of online um, way to deliver lessons, you can do things through Padlet or quizzes through Kahoot. Um, you know, there's, I think there's quizzes through Google as well you can do on Microsoft. So there's lots of different ways that you can do that. Um, if you don't have that, you can do things like um, paper-based activities, such as matching objects to their um, to their actual meanings. So that children are actually learning what words mean. So they're developing their knowledge of science. Um, games such as bingo, again, are useful to send home that parents can play with children, where they're matching words and knowledge. So they're really developing their science, um, and you're finding what they're actually learning. Um, again, the, you know, assessment is a huge area, especially in primary science. So we do have lots of courses on FutureLearn that are dedicated to assessment, such as the Assessment for Learning course. And also, you know, face-to-face -face courses near you or regional uh, courses up in York that you can access with bursaries. Um, there's one coming up in May if, if you're lucky enough to be able to get out of your school to actually attend it. Um, so yeah, there, there's some of the ideas and I would say there's lots of other support for you if you're out there not really knowing where to go with your assessment. Thanks Rachel. I mean that's, um, there's lots of great ideas there and yeah, as you said the the assessment for learning courses, intro to assessment for learning and planning for learning um, both have lots of these approaches demonstrated in the classroom and then it's about how do you work using the, the technology you've got in your particular school or context to um, to translate those ideas to remote. So the next um, question is quite a tricky one, actually, and it's, it's about um, the, the challenge of remote learning and not being able to cover the amount of content that you would normally cover, uh, particularly where we're using short videos uh, and, 
and with the guidance that's been given in the UK for about three hours of, of learning a day, how do we still expect mastery of concepts in science and the wider curriculum? And what happens um, on the return to school when we've not covered as much of the curriculum as we'd hoped? Well, <laughs> um, I think this, the short answer to that is we can't expect all of our children to all have learned in the same way because everyone's having a different experience of remote learning. So again, it comes back to assessment and once children are back in school, it's finding out where they are and then what we have to cover. It's not an idea of giving more content to children um, and teachers to learn on top of the content that they're still to learn within the curriculum. I think it's taking a more measured approach and actually looking at the curriculum as a whole. For example, for primary science, you could look at it for the whole of primary through to early secondary and identifying the gaps where children have had the remote learning experience or have been in lockdown and they haven't learned a particular topic and then looking at where they might next learn that topic in key stage two or even in key stage three. Um, and then it's ensuring that you're actually making a plan for two years ahead to actually support the learning that they missed when they're looking at that topic again. So it's really very much the job of working with your science lead in your school um, and, and doing that as a whole rather than pushing more and more um, content onto overly stressed children and stressed teachers, because being stressed is not a good way of learning. Um, there are some really lovely resources out there that support this. Primary Science Teaching Trust have um, a recovery curriculum where they've actually mapped out how you can do this. Um, for example, if you, if you learn about light in year three, you're not going to cover it again until year six, but some of the content from year three could easily be covered in that year six curriculum. And again, it's looking at skills as well and types of inquiry that children may have missed and just flagging that up and making sure that you're going to be covering that in other years um, is really important. Um, there is another resource out there that um, has been that we've been flagging up, which is called the CALM curriculum, which is a lovely name. Um, and again, there are lots of really lovely um, examples on there for every year group of how you can actually do do this to um, to support children um, in ensuring that they have access to the whole of the primary curriculum, but over a longer period of time. Our final question, um, the final topic I wanted to look at was about how we can do activities for things like Science Week and whole school opportunities, um, both remotely and when schools go back as well. OK, um, well, Science Week, you know, is a great opportunity to get the whole school working as, as a whole again. You know, children have missed out on that. They've missed out on seeing the rest of the school being in their isolated bubbles. So it is a lovely opportunity to do that. Um, if you're running your Science Week remotely, which I think most schools will be this year, um, then there are still lots of resources and ideas out there for you to be able to do that. Um, you know, we've got some lovely starters for STEM, starters for science activities, um, which use things that are found around the home. So they're science-based activities or STEM-based activities um, that could easily be carried out by older children or adults at home with younger children without having to go and buy specialist equipment. Um, there are some really nice ideas as well from the British Science Association. There's loads of resource packs linked to different themes. Um, and I know that, again, the Primary Science Teaching Trust have developed a quick, they're called Whistle Stop Science Weeks. So you've got a snapshot one page of what you could actually do remotely with um, your school based on whatever theme you want. Like you might want to pick space or light or time or flight. Whatever your topic is, there is a, an opportunity to use one of those topics in a really easy, minimal way of planning it. Again, um, if you did want to pick space, there is a Mission X um, programme that you can join. 
Um, and the beauty of that is that actually there's lots of activities like PE challenges that are really easy, that link into the science of PE as well. Um, really easy for children to do at home and the whole school could really get involved with doing something like that. And it's part of a wider competition. So again, it's um, you, you can compete as a school, which brings the whole school together. Um, again, STEM ambassadors, there's the option of getting STEM ambassadors who are um, people who work in industry or um, you know, in different roles linked into science and technology. And they will actually do virtual talks or run virtual activities with children. So it's worth having a look um, on the STEM ambassadors page to find out what's going on with them. Um, again, you know, you could get children to research scientists and each year group could have a different scientist to research. That's something that can be done at home and then they could bring it all together in a, a lovely presentation at the end. Again, there's a, a talk going on about this very topic um, in our community. So you can see what other teachers have posted in there um, and ask them a question if you want to find out more. Yeah, the STEM community is really quite a, a great place at the moment for these, these questions, and these discussions. And it can be accessed at community.stem.org.uk and we welcome all teachers to join that and be part of that community. Thank you very much, Rachel. Um, some wonderful ideas there. We'll put the links up on as well. And thank you very much to our participants on the course. And we hope um, you have enjoyed the course and taken some great ideas that you can implement with your students too.